What's up? Today we're gonna go over a very simple and universal opening against White's first move pawn to e4. And it kind of reminds me of the London system in a way that it's very simple to learn it, it's just a setup, you can learn it in two minutes, really. And secondly, it secures you from any attacks or opening traps and so forth, right? So you can just play normal chess. So there we go, after e4 we go pawn e5, and we then continue with standard moves, knight of 3, knight c6, bishop c4 is the most played here on amateur level. And the move that I suggest here is a very old, in fact, opening variation called a Hungarian defense, bishop to e7. What's the point? Well, you take away this square, meaning that what well, cannot jump there, you know, in the future and hit you, there are no fry liver attacks anymore whatsoever. Also, you don't worry about any d4 stuff, you know, c3, d4, where it could possibly hit your bishop the way it goes in the Italian game. And also, if you ever need to defend in the center, you just play pawn d6, and that solidifies your position so well that there are just no attacks possible for white and no tricks, no traps, nothing. Yes, it's a little bit passive, not the most aggressive way of playing, but if you're following me for some time, you know there must be a catch, and you're right. The most played variation here by white leads to a nasty trap where they just lose. More about that in a moment. So, let's say white does something, you know, whatever, basically, knight c3, whatever. You just play d6, knight f6, you castle, that's it. You're good to go. Again, nothing that white can do to stop that. If instead white plays a more ambitious move, pawn d4, guess what do you do? You play the same stuff, pawn d6. You just want to be really well defended so that white cannot do anything against you. Here white is at the crossroad. If white pushes forward with d5, cool, they attack your knight, but at the very same time, you know, this bishop is currently dull, doesn't do anything, and your knight will in the future will come back to the game. And the position is locked now, again, there are no attacks for white anymore, just knight of 6, castle, you know, play normal chess. If instead white takes here on e5, that just initiates a massive trade. Pawn takes, you know, queen takes, bishop takes d8, your bishop actually did a good job defending it, and we reach to an approximately equal endgame position. Maybe white is slightly better, but I highly doubt that your opponents, especially if they are, you know, not expert level players, are so great uh, endgame experts and they know how to play these positions. They, in fact, much rather prefer attacking in the middle of the game rather than playing this dry endgame. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And your plan is still the same. Knight of 6, castle, bishop, g4, play most usual developing moves. All right, now let's go to the database of games and let's see how white usually handles it incorrectly. So here we're going once again for the Italian game. By the way, you can use the very similar setup against the Rue Lopez. I don't know if you're curious about that or not. If you're interested in, in me record another video on how to use this system against the Rue Lopez, you can vote for it. If this video gets, let's say, 2,000 likes, I'll record a continuation and I'll show how to use something very similar against Rue Lopez. But for now, let's not overcomplicate. Let's just stick to the most played move on amateur level, Bishop C4. We're going for the Hungarian defense. Um, and Lee Chess tells me that this defense is seldom seen, but has a reputation of being solid. Well, cool, if it's seldom seen, then your opponents are unaware of it. Now, according to the database, the most played move here is castling, which just castles. You go knight of 6, sure, according to the plan, knight of 6, castle d6, right? So we're, we're gonna play these moves mostly. Now, knight of 6 here hits this pawn, and white plays rook e1 to defend it similar to the way they do it in Rue Lopez and in many variations of the Italian game. Now, you just castle. Here, white plays c3, by far the most popular move here, right? c3. And that's the catch. This most popular move, pawn c3, turns out to be a blunder. Because you've got, instead of d6, instead of the standard move, in this case, you have something a lot more ambitious, which is knight takes e4. Now, after that, you see that your pawns will capture here on e4. There's pawn with pawn to d5. And here's an interesting thing, if I just turn down, uh, turn on the engine, it already shows minus 2.4. And when I use the latest version of Stockfish, it shows minus 3. So basically, black is completely winning right here with this very simple trick. Now, let me show you why. So what's the problem here for white? Well, first of all, there is an immediate problem that we're attacking these two pieces. And on top of that, there is also a more long-term problem that it's difficult for white to develop their queen side pieces, which means that the battle is going on and white is playing without half of their pieces. And for that reason, you can crush them easily. Anyway, first of all, white needs to address this threat, and they usually capture here. They recapture attacking this rook. 
In most cases, your pawns will bring the rook back. If they try defending it, it doesn't help because after rook d8, this pawn is going to be taken on d3 and you're going to win anyway. So that's not helpful. If rook comes back to e1, that's even worse, in fact, because you play pawn e4 now, taking this knight. Where can it go? This diagonal is taken away by the bishop. Therefore, the knight has nothing else to do but to play here on d4. And in this case, you can already capture here and win a pawn. But you can be merciless and not let white to escape with just being one pawn down because you're aiming higher. You instead play knight e5. And your goal here is to put your knight on d3. And from there, it's going to completely dominate over the position. And it's also going to completely lock white's queen side so that they can't move the pawn forward you know, nowhere near and they can develop their pieces. For example, in this game we're analyzing why I played queen e2 trying to get rid of this pawn, but you can defend it very simply, pawn f5. Here for some reason why I played knight c2, I'm not sure why, but on the other hand it's not easy to come up with a decent alternative anyway. And by the way, if you're ever annoyed by this knight, you can always play pawn c5 and force it to go. In the game, white just played knight to c2, black responded knight to d3, and that's the triumph of black's strategy. With this knight, white is completely paralyzed. This pawn can no longer move, the bishop can no longer be developed, so as the rook from a1, and white is just stuck. Black attacks here, white moved the rook away, black played pawn f4, starting the attack there, white tried to stop it, but then bishop c5 came, attacking the king right here, and basically that's already losing for white. If king goes to the corner, there is knight f2, check and on the next move you're gonna capture continue attack and that's just winning there aren't that many openings against e4 that you can learn in one minute but the hungarian defense is literally one of them so you're gonna on the next move you're gonna play knight of six castle d6 if necessary and whether you're facing your chess body or magnus carlson none of them will be able to stop you from doing that and you secure yourself from any opening tricks traps attacks and you just get a normal middle game position to play that said, it's slightly passive, so if you prefer a more aggressive style of playing, of course you may check out my video about the Russo Gambit, which is a lot riskier, but also a lot more aggressive as well, and can work out well, especially in Blitz. Finally, let me remind you that the enrollment for my flagship course, 7 Keys to Victory, is only going to be available for a few more days, so if you're interested in improving your chess, you may click the link below the video and join the next cohort of students, because as far as I've noticed, very often people just play games, solve tactical puzzles, watch videos, do common sense stuff, but they don't really achieve any noticeable improvement in their chess rating, because they never have any you know, real guidance on how to improve. And as soon as they get these guidance, very often they progress in one month better compared to the last year or a couple years. So if you're interested, I'll be happy to handhold you throughout this process and to help you achieve all of your chess goals as quickly as possible. If not, then I'll talk to you in my next videos and I'm wishing you all the best.